they are the guys who use the traditional Japanese words for the techniques. Oh my god! So oh, they'll go be like Kazushi or uh, they're also like anime Senkaku hands. or whatever. Yeah. And then when they started using that, I was like, what the. F- is Senkaku, dude. It's simple. <laughs> John Danaher talks Don, like that. Yeah. I'm a John Danaher <laughs> from Boston. I make sure you do a tonkatsu. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Casual Combat Sports and MMA Show, hosted by casual fans that don't know nothing at all. Oh, oh that oh. was good. Kind of good. Yeah. You try it. You try it. They, we don't know nothing. Oh, dude, you know what? Nick can actually rap. Can he really? Dude, no, I yeah, can't hit that rap, freestyle. Dude. He always does this to me. <laughs> I have to, I, he likes watching me sweat, and he likes watching me go, oh, jeez, no, okay, I don't know. This, the topic, I've never rapped a the day in my life. is big titties. Here we go. Five, four, three, and... Uh, my, I like big titties, and I'm here to say. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, give it up for our resident fighter who's always nervous, Nick Dunn. Stop calling me a fighter, dude. You're our I'm resident not a fighter. fighter. And guess what? Our next... Uh, this is going to be the first us and the casuals um, host to take an influencer boxing match. It's going to yeah. be David So. Get up for David So. Wow, 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 wow. I will and only do influencer boxing if I'm paid a minimum of seven figures. Oh, damn, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah I'm not worth that much. So, but Seven figs? I think you can get it. Yeah, I mean, I got to think about taxes. You can get six figs easy. I you think. know, the trainer cuts, everything else. I need at least seven figures for me to get knocked out. Apparently, those guys don't get paid. <laughs> yeah, they don't get paid much. <laughs> they don't, they, yeah. Well, they say they're going to get promised like six figs and then nothing. Yeah. They I, just don't get paid. So the reason I bring that up is because we just started training again. We're all back in the, uh, I don't know what you call it. We did egg. one session. One session. But I think it's a, I think <laughs> we're it's back. Just one. Hey. Just one. <laughs> we're back, baby. Once we get a couple weeks together, then we could be like, yeah, Yo, we're training consistently. No, we're back. My favorite thing to watch oh, on dude. Instagram, and I know this might sound really bad, but I could say this as a fat person, is when fat people say like, Dude, it's all they have all these motivational speeches about them losing weight, and then the year <laughs> passes and they're fatter at the end. <laughs> <laughs> We're back, baby. <laughs> it's like I'm back in this. I'm doing this for myself. How'd you gain thirty pounds? Weight well, loss is hard, bro. It's hard. <laughs> Real it's, trainer, it's, you know, it's, it's hey, hard. Baby, for I got a lot of bro. clients that are struggling with hey, this. Bro, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weight gain is easy, dude. That's the, that's the way to do it, baby. You, they just gotta hop on that Ozempi. Oh, oh dude, shoot. Ozempi. Does that really work? It does until Don't you tell stop me that. using it. Don't tell me that. Honestly, I have a couple clients that have been on it, right? And then they, look they get them. really scared when it's time to come off of it because it just makes you full all the time, right? Just, you just don't want what to. Is, what does it do to your body? I don't it just know. makes your your intestines all jumbled. So if, if you just stay full for longer, you don't want to eat. So I would fight past appetite. that easy, though. Because, like, for me, I'm full all the time. I still want to eat. It's all up here, baby. Yep, and this is weak as fuck. Yeah. If I no, no, I mean, like, you have the mental to push past the fullness. Oh, 100%. That's the thing, too. Like, if I took Ozempic, <laughs> it wouldn't change anything because I would just still eat when I'm full. It doesn't yeah. matter. That's what I do now. Yeah, I'll find a Petsu. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find it when I'm full. You want to know the secret fucking weight loss trick of all time? Hit it. That fighters use all the time? Just eat watermelon. That's it, dude. Is that for real? Low key. A pound of watermelon? It's going to sound is- crazy. 150 calories. This is going to sound crazy. That's a Who lot of volume. are the most fit people on this planet? Athletes-wise. Okay, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ow, like There's a correlation. Hey, hey let me just say it right You're now. right. You're absolutely right, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> hey, not going to say it. That's a good tactic. Hey, dude, everyone loves watermelon, okay? Everybody loves watermelon. Not Pete. Is that what you're getting? Not, not Pete. Pete. Pete, you not like Pete. watermelon? Look at him. He doesn't this eat enough. Is- you're you're baiting me here. I know, I know what's going on. Pete just comes out of nowhere. I love fried chicken. <laughs> it's like, yo, Pete, yo, relax, Pete. Pete. Chill, dude. I saw a hog mall. We're talking about diets, man. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is not a joke. Uh, the reason why I brought up training and you fighting and influencer boxing, we you know we joked around about it. I actually did hit up the producer, two of the producers for Creator Clash, to see if there's a spot. You, open. you didn't even get his permission. I don't dude. need to. I were you his him. manager? I manage him. I mean, if they pay me, I'll do it. I know. Oh, I, I think this. I need like seeing you. Gil, what are you starting here, bro? I'm trying to get. Look, David is legit. He's very legit. He's he's, pretty, le- he's very good. If you guys saw him hitting mitts on his Instagram, he's he hates this, but he is legit. And I, was I not think happy about those mitts. I was I was a little rusty. Okay, he's fumbling now. He's getting older. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little rusty. When the underbite comes out, that means he's a little nervous. <laughs> I, I hey, straight. I really do feel like you could. In a boxing match, you can do very well. You can do very well against, and I'm going to say a person's name. I've seen him strike. 
Bradley Martin. I actually think you can fight Bradley Martin. I'm not scared of Bradley Martin at no, all. You're not. Whoa, that's, dude. See, that's why I didn't ask his permission. Bro, he's 260, dude. And he asked <laughs> he asked UFC fighters if he could uh, beat him in a street fight. Well, I'll say this, right? Like, <laughs> if it's a street fight, he's he's beating my ass because like he's just so large and strong. I'm boxing, but within boxing rules, I'm not scared of that dude. Low like, key though. David got good footwork, so you got to you got to grab him first. You know? I mean, look, we all know this too. Like somebody that big, he's gonna get tired fast. Like it's it's just gonna happen. And either way, like he has run up some stairs. He yeah. hasn't been training as long as I have. I'm not scared to box that guy, but I'm scared of him in general. Yeah. Same. But and by the way, you give me like six seven months, I'll I'll leave everything. I'll leave my wife. <laughs> I'll, I'll quit yep. this podcast we just started. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will dedicate. I'm look. Even if I lose, who the fuck cares, right? I'm not a real fighter, but I'm not gonna go out there and not try my best. Yeah, I don't like losing either. I fucking hate it. Yeah, you're one of those guys that nerds out on stuff and takes things seriously. So I'm like, oh, that's why I made that. the I made the call. I'm waiting for the text today. If look. If the numbers are right, I say we just we you trade yeah, them. I mean, they're not gonna pay me what I want to get paid, so it's not gonna happen either way. Cause people gotta understand, man. Like I don't. Hey, but you're an athlete. You love the challenge. Do no. you not? Do you not, I David? Like the, do you not? Listen, if this was seven, eight years ago, maybe, right? But well, I'm 35 now. I have a torn meniscus, patella tendonitis in my left knee. I have this torn shoulder right now, so I don't know. But eight if years I'm fighting ago? Bradley Martin, that's light not, work, baby. We're not doing drug testing. I'm taking steroids, baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm taking. I'm doing. Steroids. You guys both get tired in the first two minutes. Yes. <laughs> you're gonna you're see me like, just oh, clench him up and whisper in his ear, "Hey, time's out, time's out." Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you whisper, "Hey, special one FC rule set. Switch the grappling." Yeah. <laughs> you're bald. You're balding. <laughs> Push him away. Stop wearing that hat. Stupid hat, balding. <laughs> Look, I'm just putting it out there. We'll see what the text says. I'm going to talk to you. I'm legit putting this on air as accountability for myself to see if I'm a good promoter and if I can convince this my athlete to take this fight. <laughs> I'm excited for this. They're like, we, we can only offer him $20,000. Nope. Hey, what's the number? Me? Like, legit, I said seven figures. Seven figures? Yeah. To fight, bro? David, come on. Because fighting is not something I care about. So, But what I do care about is money <laughs> so if if i'm just doing this for clout fuck that i'll do a pkb kickboxing match i'll just do that if i want to fight you know what i mean i don't need to do it in front of a huge crowd so there's a reason why i haven't even done pkb i haven't done any of that stuff mm. because it doesn't drive me to what will drive me is if it's a challenge and there's money behind it because at the end of the day if i get knocked out i don't care about people making fun of me i care about this brain yeah. you know what i mean sure like you don't come back from shit like that when somebody hits you in the head and you're wobbled like it you lose some fucking brain cells dog and i just don't want that I just have to disagree with you. Your head movement's too good. No, 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 no. no. Your head movement's too good. You, you know how quick he is. I look. Hey, Bradley. Fuck you, man. This is my athlete. He's coming for you for seven figures. Bradley, let me tell you something, man. You, I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like your way you do business. You built an empire, and Get I don't have ch- anything bad to say about you. He does it. I, I like him. I like him a lot, dude. <laughs> I just want to see David fight. I just think you're so good. Look, literally watch David's first video of him boxing with Nick. It's hilarious. And then watch now. It really is like, what the fuck? Do you <laughs> think you could beat up Nate Robinson in a street fight? Street- Nate Robinson. Right now, no, I couldn't. I mean, he's still a He's an athlete. athlete. He's an athlete. He's still an athlete. Yeah. Me, Nate Robinson, yeah. I'll fuck him up. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. I'll fuck up Nate Robinson. I don't yeah. give a fuck. I saw Did that for I'm going to meet him up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I saw Nate Robinson box. I'll take that full right now. Oh, damn. He did. He wasn't boxing, dude. Yeah. He missed the memo. He was doing something else with, with Jake Paul. <laughs> watch, watch the person <laughs> to get me to fight is Nate Robinson. He beats my ass. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'll be, so, I'll be so angry. But then again, like, I like Nate Robinson, too. He's yeah. great, too. He's, He's amazing, dude. He's funny. Oh, Let's speak- talk about some MMA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm just talking about my boy David, guys. He's good. Uh, I think so, bro. Uh-oh. Well, speaking of knockouts. This actually might happen now this, that you're thinking about it. Now we're talking about it. We're, we're going to have a real talk because I've I reached out to the promoters for David. <laughs> hey, retire me, dude. Pay me. and Pay me. I'll do it. I'll suck dick. I'll eat ass. All on the same card, dude. <laughs> you don't have to do that. It's like no, that, I man. want to. Hey, man, we're saying you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Put it in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not sucking dick on the contract, I ain't fighting, dude. <laughs> Hey, we don't want to do that, though, David. No pause. All gay shit. Let's go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, speaking of, all right, okay. You know what? Okay, all right. All right, all Force right. Force her hand. Hey, I hear you, dude. Like, I'll put it in the contract. David, you can't suck dick, then I'm not fine then, bro. Okay. <laughs> uh, some weird contract. <laughs> speaking of <laughs> knockouts, <laughs> Cedric Dumbe. Dumbe. Oh, Dumbe. It's super Cedric. simple. thought it was more French. Dumbe. Uh, nine second KO in the PFL. Uh, originally was supposed to find a UFC. Yeah, UFC passed on him. Why? 
he might have been asking for too much money. Probably right. And they're like, you know what? We're the UFC. Go fuck yourself. A little background on Cedric Dumbay for Dumbay. only UFC fans. Cedric Dumbay is a fucking beast of a kickboxer. He actually defeated twice one of my favorite kickboxers of all time, fucking Nikki Holtzky. Who was the Ooh. reigning champ. Yep. They beat him twice, and then he beat Gronhart, who was another. Oh, that's right. He mm -hmm. beat him, too. Another Crazy big time fight. champ. I think it was, what, like 170, 180 or something like that? But Dumbay is a serious kickboxer, and he just knocks everybody out. But he's also, like, he has a weird style, like, in the Dutch kickboxing space. It's it's a little unorthodox, but he is he's a funky guy, and he could kickbox. He's and, like, in, the, in, in UFC, it's very interesting. He's adapted his stance super fucking low. I mm -hmm. think he's very mindful of these takedowns. But, I mean, we could watch this whole clip. It's yeah. only, like, two seconds. <laughs> his first fight. It's insane. He catches the leg, scoops it, bink, boom, folds him. Damn, left hand right there. Right there. That is fucking crazy. That's a shot, though. You got to understand how hard this fool fucking punches because he was doing this in glory kickboxing with his hands, but mm. now with four ounce Whoa. gloves. Uh, that fool's literally in the fucking whatever it's called, Wakanda land right there. You don't know where the <laughs> fuck he's at. All of you made it longer. It's just Wakanda. Yeah. Wherever that Wakanda land Wakanda place. Land. What's that place where they eat the flower? <laughs> he in the flower land. Oh, the purple wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you're about to be a Black Panther, dude. Yeah. What talking about. <laughs> Can I think about is that, it? Is that racist? No. I'm only saying that because he looks like warriors. No, I don't know. <laughs> now, now I'm questioning if it's racist. Yeah. If you ask me, <laughs> is that racist? No, he looks like Wakanda land. You chose wrong. What do they call Shang-Chi land? What do they call that? Huh? <laughs> Stupid. That's what that is. <laughs> no, they call it a place, wasn't it? Uh... It looked like somebody's. It doesn't matter. It just I'm looked sorry like a. It, it just looked like the backyard of somebody's house in South Pasadena. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what it looked like. Honestly, Din Tai Fung looks more magical. <laughs> <laughs> I walk, in, I walk in a Din Tai Fung. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Shang Chi land had a four foot pond with an 800 feet dragon inside. Explain <laughs> that. <laughs> Fucking dumb. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, uh, but you hear what he said after the? He, apparently, he was talking shit to uh, his ex coach, uh, who is. Is that Francis's? Cyril Gans. Oh, Cyril Gans. Oh, MMA big, factory guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's the big uh, French MMA guy. And he was like insinuating that he like beats his wife or something. Yeah, he said something about domestic violence and yeah. he didn't want to talk about it, but now he has a platform. She's so talking about it. He just like mentioned it and everyone was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Listen, you know what? <laughs> I don't really like that because look. You don't know all the fucking details, yeah. right? You don't know you don't, what she was saying. You don't know anything. <laughs> like you don't know what she. You don't know what she. Did to him. <laughs> yeah. What did she say, dude? I am a victim blamer. <laughs> so no, but like that kind of stuff. It's like keep that behind doors. Solve that shit elsewhere. Yeah. Because now, what if it's not true? Remember that dude in the UFC that was like, "Oh, you beat up your fucking girlfriend or whatever." Yeah. And it turned out it wasn't fucking true. She was the abuser or some shit. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, like it was completely. And while not he's true. getting, I think Tim Elliott was beating him up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the guy's on his on his back getting pummeled, and he's like, "It's not like that, dude." Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "You don't know the whole story." He's like, you don't know the whole story, and he's like, "Oh yeah," and he's. And it turns out him. it wasn't true at all. Like, oh my God. it was some other type of shit, and then you put the shit out in public. Like, I don't understand why fighters do that, bro. Fucking fight. Talk about the next fight that you want, and then all that other stuff, figure it out behind doors, and then do like, it after. Involve the correct people. Have yeah. you investigate. Have you guys ever seen The Last Dance? Uh, yes. Remember in like every fucking episode, Michael Jordan's like, and that's the time I took that personal, and then I, I, <laughs> I dropped 50 on him. Yeah. I think that's just a thing that athletes do. And it wasn't even anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They yeah. like interview everybody like Michael Jordan was talking about. He goes, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Yeah, he came up and he called my wife a whore. He goes, I asked you if you wanted water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. I said water. Bart has the funniest story. He said that he he had a, a, a sensei when he was doing MMA. Bart Kwan. Yeah, Bart okay. Kwan, by Bert. the way. And he told this on, on my podcast where his, his sensei would always say something <laughs> crazy to his opponent to psych them out. Like he literally said, and you can bleep this word out if you like, but he said that he saw him in a match. He comes up to his opponent. He goes, you raped my wife. And the guy goes, what? <laughs> and he just goes back to his corner. <laughs> Whoa. And the guy's like, what do you say? Well, I didn't do anything. And yeah. he just starts beating his ass yeah. after. To like psych himself up. That's like, like some Michael Jordan, Dort, like yeah. crazy yeah. people. You need shit. a reason, bro. You need a reason to, to drop 50 on That's not a made up story. That's a true story. He would say that shit because he needs to get in his head that this person did something terrible to him just to fight him. It's a weird mentality to have. I think a lot of fighters do that. Yeah. They just take things like quote unquote personal and then they use that to fuel them to punch the guy in the face. Not, over not and over Stephen and over Wonderboy again. Thompson, though. He daps no. people up after he kicks him in the face. <laughs> yeah, nice. Hey, yeah. good shot, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You took that really well. <laughs> yeah, but Cedric Dumbay, man, like, if you guys haven't, just go watch any of his glory kickboxing So matches. entertaining. I haven't seen a lot of it. I didn't know he was, like, 
he, like, huge. He's a big it. deal. He's a big deal, Gil. What's wrong with UFC not signing him? I think it is just a money, a money thing. thing. Gosh. And also, too, it's what kind of a gamble. Awesome. You get a, a kickboxer into the UFC, and you're like, well, our grapplers are pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's just really hard for certain guys. Only Alistair, maybe? But I was like, he's an early MMA guy. So. Yeah, yeah, who went into to kickboxing with the yeah. horse meat and all that. <laughs> oh, shout out. Dude, he, I heard he's a vegan now. Yeah, Stop. crazy. He lost really? like 60 pounds. The doctor was probably like, if you don't stop doing these drugs, you're yeah. going to die. It, yeah. it, is like, it hurts me. Yeah, yeah. Stop doing the drugs. Yeah. He's, like, <laughs> he's like, you know what? I'll, I'll Maybe I'll try a cycle of vegan for a little bit. It's so funny. He does an interview. He goes, I've been big like this my whole life. Cut to him when he was 170 pounds. So <laughs> skinny, dude. It's like, dude, you were on TV at the time. We could just look back at the footage. What are you saying, man? He's a twig, that guy. Him at heavyweight. Remember when he was oh, Ubering? Ki- oh, dude. And he was just, guys, he would kick guys in their arms and break their arms. He broke Gokan Saki's arm. For the kick. Just threw a kick on his arm and was like, oh, arm's he exploded broken. exploded Brock Lesnar's <laughs> innards. <laughs> he gave him diverticulitis. That's, that's what <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. That's how it happened. Yeah, he burned a hole in his intestine. I don't take steroids at all. <laughs> Boxing match, uh, Canelo versus Tarlo. Uh, bro, Canelo is a uh, couple things I'm scared of. One, uh, my mother. The other things, Canelo's right hand and his left to the body is fucking insane. It's so money the way he sets that up. How does he? It's, it's pretty too. Walk me through it. He just fucking leans it off to the side and just, uh, just he throws his whole hip into it. Like it's all in the setup, you know. Like Canelo is just he's so slick. His, talk about head movement. Mm-hmm. It's not as good as David So, but it's close. oh relax, dude. I have <laughs> zero close, head movement. Hey, whatsoever. editor, put a side by side the head movement. <laughs> It's virtually identical. No, 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 no. If, you can't you guys, the if, if anybody in the future ever gets to spar me, this is what you'll say. Pretty good in the first 15 seconds. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Was it, was it moves past the 15 seconds? Double back fist all day. <laughs> like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, why is, he, why is he so sloppy and tired? That's my gas tank. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. No, that's man. Lying. But Canelo, I think everyone expected him to beat up Charlo, mm-hmm. you know? Um. But did, did you see anything in the fight that you were like, oh, wow. I think what it was, and I'm not sure if you guys agree with this, it's just that I think a lot of people, when they go into the ring with Canelo, right, they see his style. He's going to shell up. He's going to get close to you, and he's going to use his head movement and make you miss, and he's going to make you pay for it, right? So, like, I think a lot of people, when they develop this plan for Canelo, they also, but they don't ever think about how strong he is. Yeah. So the moment they feel him, it's like, oh, this is a, a lot different different than i thought it was going to be mm. so once they even feel his punches against their guard they're like oh i'm in real danger here so it kind of fucks up their plans and his pressure is just like yeah oh he's really scary <laughs> and he's a redhead dude yeah dude. they're First, both a little different you know? can i just say this i don't know why because I, well i never heard i only got super into boxing maybe about like six or seven years ago right mm-hmm. so when i first heard of canelo i was like why does he keep coming out with the mexican flag <laughs> Like, what is this fucking Irish dude over here yeah, just yeah. fucking po- culturally appropriating for the Mexicans for? And then he opens his mouth. And then, <laughs> <laughs> hola, 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 Viva la Mexico! Yeah, Viva la Mexico! Don't, don't call me a motherfucker! Yeah, yeah. dude, that's my favorite. Yeah. Is oh, when God. Canelo okay. is cursing at people. He's like, you're a motherfucker. Remember when he was talking to Caleb Plant and he was just like, this guy called me a motherfucker. And he's like, you said, fuck my mom. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't understand. And that, then like... cut to a clip of him in a press conference before. Get out of here, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, motherfucker. <laughs> and I think that goes to what we were talking yeah. about, how they just create these scenarios in their head yeah. just so they could go in and fight. And by the way, Caleb Plant was a fucking huge challenge for Dude. him. Caleb Plant, I, I arguably... Slick. Style wise, love Caleb Plant the way more than I like Canelo. Oh, I love Caleb Plant, dude. He has fun. He plays in there. He sets things up really well. He's quick as fuck, strong as hell too. It's just when you come next to Canelo, it's just a different story, though. Yeah, Caleb Plant is dope. He styles on people, dude, and he's handsome. You, you see him when he slapped the dude. I think he slapped one of the Charlo brothers. Uh, uh, I think backstage really? at a boxing match. They were like sh- talking shit, ch- shit to each other. And uh, Caleb Plant just slaps on these. Like, don't you ever get my face like that again. Ooh. Like, oh, God. These guys are scary, bro. Ooh. These guys are fucking scary. I don't know if I will be able to do that. <laughs> but how do you do that with such confidence? You slap somebody and say, don't you ever say that shit to me again. Yeah. I'd be like, or you can if you want. I'm sorry <laughs> I did that. I'm sorry. I was, I was overreacting. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Nick would sock somebody and then call the ambulance immediately. After. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh Somebody's hurt on the floor. I You're not going to tell me, are you? <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I called his mother. Whore. I'm so sorry. 
All right, moving on to another got? recap. We got uh, one FC. Let's go. go. You know, in the comments, people were really appreciative that we actually cover one FC fights, and yeah. I actually didn't know a lot of people watch one FC. Um, there's definitely I. Well, somebody wrote in the comments too, which was great. They they kind of mentioned what the rule sets were for judging. They they judge oh, yeah. the fight as a whole mm-hmm. instead of round by round. Yeah, which is probably better. Yeah, and probably then for better. kickboxing, boxing, they keep it to ten, like the ten point system. Ten. Which yeah, makes yeah, sense yeah. for that kind of fight. You know what was interesting in this fight card? They had a fucking uh, MMA glove boxing match. Yeah, yep. against the girl who who fought uh, Angela Lee for the title, the Chinese chick. Oh yeah, uh, Zhang. Yeah. Yeah, Young. Bro. so she is the former Adam Weight champion in MMA, and then now- look at that little dude. <laughs> look at that cute little dude. Yeah, look at that dude. But hey, by the way, throwing a lot of uh, Chinese tomahawks in that fight. Did you guys watch that? Yep. <laughs> lot of, explain uh, to the viewers what a Chinese tomahawk is. Yeah, a Chinese tomahawk is when you hold your fist like this and go. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they allow for like what, hammer, hammer fist back. There was like a, such a weird. Rule you can do set. spinning back. So basically, you can do spinning back fist. Uh, you can do Superman uh, elevated uh, punches or like oh. jumping in the air. Superman punch. You just can't do elbows or any of the Muay Thai stuff. Oh shit! That's but, kind of fun, dude. Yeah, isn't fun. that fun? Because throughout the whole fight card, you're watching so many different rule sets that it just the variety is nice. Especially if you're a fan of grappling, you're a fan of. Chinese tomahawks and, <laughs> and and high level Muay Thai, dude. It's 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 really fun. The variety is great. That's your new nickname, like Nick. Chinese tomahawk. Tomahawk. Zhang looks like somebody I went to high school with, dude. To look like a Vietnamese gangbanger. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> hey Dewey. man, which one, man? Yeah, what's up? My name is Dewey Tran. <laughs> Dewey Tran. Dewey dude. Tran. <laughs> Don't fuck with me, man. Every day, gangbang, motherfucker. Fuck you, head <laughs> dude, man. Chinese tomahawk. <laughs> You uh, to come here, man. You know what? I'm, come I'm here, man. Ass. So I was telling the guys that when I saw all the highlights for this, first of all, it's just like the diversity of a card. It feels like you're watching. I don't know. Like it's just a variety show. It exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like America's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. It's just like this is amazing. I like. We had obviously uh, MMA champion. After that, I didn't realize they were doing a Muay Thai four ounce gloves. After that, randomly grappling match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Which, I was like, oh, cool. Two. Like uh, MMA people now fighting with boxing shoes, like it was just. Oh very... yeah, that threw me off. I was like, "When are they gonna kick?" I yeah, have no idea. <laughs> but that, that's what I want to know is like, how do they decide that? Because this is literally the former MMA champion at Adam Way, and this is a Muay Thai fighter. Why were they like, "Cool, let's let's just do boxing"? It just seems so weird, but it was cool. And boxing is so different from kickboxing too. Like everything changes. There's so many things you don't have to worry about, and your defense, the way you utilize it, it's so different too. Like your head movement is completely fucking different. How you parry things, and on top of that, now they don't have big gloves when they box. Yeah. Like what's what's the defense has to be way more slick. It's just insane. I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder how that would change things in the UFC if they had like a mixed card of just different rule sets. But I think. Where they would get in trouble was like the commissions, like the yeah. mm-hmm. commission. It's mm-hmm. too much red tape. But I think for somewhere, I think they fought in what Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. I don't know what their setup is over there. But I it don't seems care. Like they could do whatever the fuck they <laughs> yeah. want. If you die, you die. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up tomorrow. If you die, who the fuck care, man? <laughs> That's what their rules are. That's what dude. it seems like. If you die, you die. Asians are shit. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, they're kind of gangster with it, right? It's like it. It, it does seem. I know it's not Japan, but it does seem like. The new age version of Pride. That's what oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like just yeah, the yeah. feel of the fights, and I I love how it, my favorite eras of the UFC was when they had a competitor like Strike Force, mm-hmm. like mm. them going back and forth, and then you see those guys, the champions in Strike Force, go to the UFC. UFC. Is cool. So I think it's really good that they have the competition with One FC. And the UFC. Because they're the kind of punches, shit. dude. Bring yeah. back ball punches, baby. <laughs> that shit was tight, dude. Put them in a little thing right here. Start socking them in the nuts nonstop. Because how would that change fights? That would change fights considerably. Oh, that's the only thing I'll go for. Yeah. That's it. Just like, why is this only throwing low kicks out the middle? <laughs> dude, why does this David guy keep trying to, like, bite my dick off? Yeah, but how did, I win, how did I win every fight with a knockout? <laughs> 
What's up, dude? <laughs> What's up? Don't fuck with me. <laughs> Devastating injuries. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Chatri, he's the uh, CEO, kind of, I think, one of the, yeah, the founder of 1FC. He said this. I'm curious, curious about your guys' thoughts. That's what makes us different. If you look at our roster, I think UFC has about 700 athletes, and so do we. But if you look at the number of world champion titles and our athletes have won before they join one, it's like half the organization. You go to UFC or Bellator, it's maybe like 20 or 30 maximum. That's why you see a lot of sloppy jiu-jitsu, sloppy low-level striking in those organizations, whereas one, you see the very, very best on the planet. It, I think bar none, we have the most exciting experience for fans all over the world. I think he brings up a very good argument. Yeah. I don't like him talking shit about the UFC. Ooh. I, I don't. The UFC Defend. changed my life, all right? It saved my life. I was sad before I was watching it, and now I'm happy. Yeah. But I also just don't like, I mean, it's good for promotion, right? Yeah. But, you got to talk some shit. But, you know. Let, let, so does he have a point, though? Well, well, let's be honest. Like, bring your heavyweights over to our heavyweights in UFC. Mm-hmm. I say our because I'm on UFC's side. Well, whoa. Our because I'm an investor in TKO. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bet you UFC's top five heavyweights knocks out every single one of their heavyweights. I agree. 100%. Their their lower weight class might be a little different. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you start getting to the heavyweights, light heavyweights, UFC, you can't touch UFC's light heavyweights and heavyweights. But mm-hmm. th- I think that's very fair because most of the fights with the heavier weight dudes, I don't really know. I'm not really familiar with the 1FC guys. No. The smaller weight guys is what we're really watching. Yes, 100%. I know more of the female fighters and yeah. the lower weight class. The females, bro. The dudes. They're so good. The female Muay Thai strikers. You get all the, the girls from Boxing Works that are fighting over there. Um, fuck, I can't believe I'm forgetting their names. Janet Todd, all those chicks. They're doing re- – they're from the U.S. They're going over there fighting ties. Mm-hmm. They're beating ties. You I know? mean, he does have a good point. Like, when, when they have these fights that are highly specialized, yep. like, come on, we just talked about that. They're still going to do the uh, Super Bond versus Tawan Chai fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like – How I'm many s- fights do those guys have between both of them? Probably over 4,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 4,000. 4, yeah. it's, it's insane. And, like, <laughs> one thing that MMA has overall versus, like, boxing and anybody else, it's like we're going to get to see the best of the best fighting each other mm. and i think one fc does that the best but overall i do think the competition is better than the ufc yeah yeah, yeah 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 you know i need to start watching more jujitsu because i watched the jujitsu match and i didn't know what was going on danielle kelly and jessica yeah. i don't you, think it works in a cage you know what weird. i think i think she's legit daniel kelly, the right? girl use daniel kelly used in the cage i feel like because jessica is a legit jujitsu girl bro mm-hmm. like she's come she comes from the mendez brothers like she's been competing since she was a kid and now she's what, black belt. What, what ethnicity is she? She's, she's Cambodian. Really? Cambodian. She got them chola yeah. eyebrows, though. That's yeah. crazy. Well, that's the Brazilian. That's ah. Cambodian Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. But her going against the cage, it looked like she was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, mm-hmm. she could push me against the cage. And I feel like if she made adjustments, I think the jiu jitsu matches would look really fucking cool. Because you see the Ty Rotulo brothers, they're, yes, they're, those fight, guys are wild. they're fighting the 1FC. These guys are jumping off the cage into submissions, into better positions. So it's like. It depends on how you use the skill, the rule set. But for for Jessica Khan, uh, hopefully we see more of her because I'm sure it's like, what the fuck is happening in here? Like she was getting, she was she was in close guard against the cage for what, like three minutes? It felt like, and that's why MMA is so exciting, right? Everybody thinks that they have an answer for something, but MMA changes everything. Like how many times have you seen jujitsu fighters come into MMA and they go, oh, I'll fucking rip your knee out? They're like, oh wait. You could punch me in the fucking face. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look what happened to fucking Ryan Hall. Bro, he was on a streak with that rolling whatever knee well, he, bar. Well, and he then, fucked around and he found out. And then yeah. he found out about that right. Kept on doing some weird ass shit, and he's like, "Ah, it's tired of this smash, bow, yeah, yeah, bow." Yeah. Look what Tunley did to you. Uh, can't spam it. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. Spam the Imanari roll. You know, it's it. It does seem like some guys, and he who, who he got knocked out by is the guy who's gonna fight for the championship, Ilya Tapuria. Oh, who's a very dang. good black belt. You know, like, and he has a. You watch him fight. He has a very well rounded game. He's good grappling he's a killer in in striking right so it's like you put all that together you're like oh this is a tough fight for ryan hall gary taught it he found out too when he fought tun lee yeah and guess who he trains with ryan hall yeah and so oh, he kept on I, trying to do the leg lock he goes i got the answer for this shit and he hammer fisted his face into an oblivion yeah and that's the thing it changes things up that's why when you start seeing like uh combat jujitsu like in the beginning when eddie bravo started this shit out a lot of these jujitsu guys forgot even though they're in competition, that you could get hit in the face. And you saw it in their face. They got slapped and they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Everything going on? changes. Everything they, they changes. They lose position. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. not doing the same thing. It, Dude, it makes you freak out. If you've never been hit in the face like that while you're grappling, 
Like you have to do MMA rounds. Because imagine this cages. Shit, like even in an even more realistic sense, right? There's a jujitsu person who doesn't actually know how to wrestle or grapple. They don't know how to get to you, and all they do is fall on their back. But let's say the rules are like we could soccer kick to the head. Yeah. Good fucking luck, dude. <laughs> yeah. Good fucking luck. You're not gonna do no Aljo fucking shit and swing your that head around. They'll just. <laughs> All right, so the main event for this card was Stamp. This Ooh. girl is a killer. Uh, man versus your girl from Korea. Okay. Same page. Your girl. Same page. <laughs> hey, everybody's like a message me. It's like, who are you going to go for? Is the number one Korea <laughs> or a Sawati Kap? <laughs> I went for a Sawati Kap. Because I actually don't know who she is outside from like a clip I saw where she was fighting this Japanese lady. Mm. And of course, I was going for the Korean yeah. lady. Yeah. And the UFC, right? When Ham was in the UFC? Ham was in the UFC? No, she's, she's, she came from the UFC. Oh, I have no oh, idea. She did, huh? she did, yeah. I actually had no idea. I don't know anything about her. I just know a lot about Stamp Fairtex because uh, I've just been watching her tear through the fucking division, except for when she uh, met up with Angela Lee. Oh. Yeah. And then Angela Lee. Dude, that was. Dude, the Angela great Lee fight. fighting her. Oh, was so great. close. Anybody could have won. And then Angela Lee being the fucking warrior that she she's is. She's such. The whole Lee family, bro. They're fucking gangsters. Dog. That, I don't know what they eat or whatever the fuck they're drinking. Spam most of these, dude. They're from Hawaii. Half, half Korean, half Singaporean. Really? Oh, yeah. that's the combination then. Yep, and it's the Korean side that's making them win. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Singaporean side is just way too chill, dude. Yeah, yeah. they're just too chill. Korean you people die, you die. Yeah. Singaporean <laughs> side, no give a fuck. You die. You die, you die. You can just see the ferocious. We talked about this last week, but, man, the ferociousness of her strikes is just so different when you watch an <laughs> MMA striker. Mm -hmm. And then so you see different. Stamp Fairtex, she's throwing up arm bars off her back. She almost caught her with that yeah. arm bar. Yeah. I was like, okay, Stamp, she has like a killer guard. She was doing really well. But also for Ham, there was a point where she almost had a Stamp out. That right, right, right cracked cross. Cracked her super yeah. fucking hard. Blips, and then she got. But then but then the body shot of death. I mean, oh, the uppercut. This oh. has been her thing. Like, she throws so well to the head, people almost forget to the point where they have to shell up, and then she always looks for that hard cross to the body. Dude, when you see that head kick that she landed. Ooh. Some, okay, there, I think that one fight that Stamp did, and this is, you could tell it was early in her career, in her MMA career, and she just has to get some fights under her belt so she gets to a promotion. She's fighting this, like, it seemed like, I think she was, like, some Indian girl. Mm. And I was like, this girl does not look like a fighter, bro. <laughs> and then Stamp head kicks her into oblivion. It was, I, I will like, say, oh. the one thing at the 1FC is, some, like, you'll flip through the UFC and you're like, oh, that chick's, like, super ripped. Every mm -hmm. chick, super ripped, whether they're a good fighter or not. You will flip through one FC sometimes, and you'll just see some chicks, and you're like, "Hmm, yeah, hmm, what are you the doing?" Crowd, here? huh? Hmm, they just pull someone from the audience. <laughs> you know what's so funny? When I see like the Lee family, I'm like, "Is Jeff Chan related to them?" <laughs> he's the long lost brother. That's he, the other brother. He's, that's he the dad. Bro. Looks like them so fucking much. It's unreal, dude. That might be racist somehow. Oh. But no. shout out to Angela Lee on the retirement, though, huh? Yeah. yeah. She's only 27 fucking years old. Bro, she, she what? Like three time champ? Yeah. Was she two division or something too? Two division could have been. Uh, Look at her youngest. Back, I believe youngest and uh, I mean, did you guys watch her telling the other girls about their fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, so emotional, dude. She like, um, it's tough, man. I, I feel like a part of this is too probably the kind of work she wants to do. Uh, you know, relating to her sisters. Yeah, I think I'm that, assuming a suicide. That, yeah, she um, apparently she. I think she. Crashed her car and attempted suicide. That's what the sister did. Man, yeah, I don't know. That, but that's that, the reason why she said she retired is she. It just it was yeah. just too hard for her. When that thing was announced, dude, it was so fucking annoying because everybody in the comments was like, "It's COVID. She died from the vaccine. She died <laughs> Bro, from the vaccine." During that time, everyone died from the vaccine for <laughs> yeah. any reason. It's the five G, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's the five G. She died from uh, the vaccine, and it's like, bro, this family's mourning right now. And also, bro, you can't just wait a day. Just yeah. wait a day. Don't post it. Five minutes after, <laughs> yeah, Dude. and she's just like, I want my oh. peace. They're like, Hey, peace be with you, but that vaccine got her. It's like, Why are you right? And then it's the worst when they put emojis. You're like, Come on, dude. <laughs> Wait, what emojis <laughs> they put? The Egg syringe plant. emoji. Egg the Egg syringe. Egg the Egg syringe plant. emoji. They put the virus emoji. You're like, yeah. All right, like, dude. What the fuck are you doing here, man? Let's not make it about COVID, huh? Uh, her, her sister, such a young fiend. I wish she came in. She, I think she was like four and zero. Oh yeah, four and zero. Oh. I think she was like seventeen Be when she took her first. Grown ass ladies. 
How is that even possible? I don't get that shit. That's amazing. Yeah, it's she was really good. Well, both her, the brother both. is good too. Oh, Christian, dude, he's he's the lightweight champion, champ, right? Double and champ, he, and he's beating guys with Namagomedov. Like you know, he's beating. Oh, Russians, beating guys right? with that last name. Yeah, that's a big deal, yeah. bro. <laughs> Sounds like Joe Rogan right about. there, dude. Namagomedov. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, give it up for Umar. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that clip is like, dude, you know that last name. Yeah. But he probably just like fucked it up. <laughs> it's like if you fuck up like halfway through, because it's eight syllables, if you fuck up halfway through, it's over. You're, done. You're not going to get the she, rest, she right? She just bailed out. Shout out to Umar Nigam. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, worst time to bail out for sure. It's also funnier because Joe going. never messes up on his words. He does. Oh, no, right? so good with it. Am I gonna and what, it was Umar, right? I it think was it was Umar, Umar yeah. It was but, Umar, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> young sister. Quite a phenom, and then Angela just retiring after what twenty seven years old. She's still super young. Her last fight was competitive when she fucking, you know, beat Stamp, yeah. which was fucking insane, yeah. by the way. Her brother too, double champ now in two different weight classes, which was a banger. If you guys, hey, Christian go, Lee, man, go watch Christian so Lee's good. last fight for that belt. Ba- there was moments where he was done, out. Same thing with uh, with with uh, Angela. She was pretty much done with that body shot, but they somehow come back. It's the Korean side. Their family has like steel trap. Their yeah. mind is so fucking strong. I admire them so much. Um, I I will say, Angela. I think she did mention that, and you guys were talking about this before the podcast. She mentioned that she she was telling the other girls uh, that she was retiring. I just don't have an in me anymore. You were talking about one of your friends that also fought at um, one FC. So yeah, the same thing. Like, what is that? Because it's like a lot of we see a lot of fighters in UFC don't call that. So it's very interesting to see someone just call it themselves at twenty seven. Like what are like who are fighters you guys feel like should have probably done the same thing, dude? Fucking all of them, because at a certain point in time, like you look at a guy like Habib mm-hmm. who rides off in the sunset. Part of you was like, man, that's tight, because you you'd rather people be like, oh, what if, what if, what if, rather than you play out your tail end of the career. Because I feel like the fight game always wins. There's always a guy who's hungrier, mentally, you know, at a different place than you. Especially when you're older, you've seen it all. It's just so hard to stay at the top because. There's always just going to be another guy or girl who is going to just like and and you see what happens to Anderson Silva, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. he had such an iconic career, <sighs> but for some reason, because MMA fans are very fickle in general, and you're only as good as your last fight, mm-hmm. you see him lose a couple fights in the row. What do you say? He's washed. Yeah, yeah. he don't got anymore. But then people forget that he's like 45 fighting guys who are <laughs> no. 30 years old. You know, it's like obviously something gives, and then also the time that you have where you're fighting at the highest level, like you only get a little bit of time. Your body can only handle so much until your timing goes a little slower and you just, you take so much damage. This is, yeah, this is not basketball. You can't play this shit for like fucking 40, 20 yeah, you years. You can't be like LeBron and taking steroids every day. It's different. <laughs> you have to get checked and shit. Because how old is LeBron, bro? He's almost, he's going to be 40 next year. Dude, that guy's And he entered the NBA when he's won 17, he can still right? He can, yeah, he can still play. <laughs> He can keep going. Forever. Yeah, he'll be forty next year, still smashing on these youngins. Yeah, doesn't fucking matter, dude. Roids are amazing, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he on it for sure. He, he oh, for, for sure. sure he's on it. Whether they say he's tested or not, look, I'm not saying it's a good, bad thing. I mean, he's playing basketball. Who the fuck cares? Yeah, exactly. He's not let them all juice, bro. Yeah, let every let every let basketball juice. player juice up. I don't give a fuck. They're not throwing punches at each other. Who cares? Imagine if like Kevin Durant had like forty two inch arms, bro. Just biceps, but the but the same but the yeah. same legs. <laughs> like a fucking weird. You know, <laughs> jumping out of the fucking arena. Um, Anderson Silva. What also, what also bothered me and made me so sad is when he took that Jake Paul fight. That made me really sad. But we all, you know, I think we called it. We all thought he was gonna win too. Yeah, I mean, I think he, a lot of people did. He did great until he st- wasn't doing great. But but then that's the best representation, right? Because you watch a guy who's like skill wise, skill for skill. If they were the same age, yeah, Anderson would, Silva would have had his way with him. Mm-hmm. No, even in that, just four years ago. Yeah, it would have been a different thing, right? And then, and then you see how Jake is what twenty five, twenty six. He's a billionaire. He's probably he's probably yammed out too. On, on also, the, on the too, files. what really upset me about the Anderson Silva fight was why the fuck did he not take steroids? Yeah, take some yeah. steroids. Hey, take a little TRT, Anderson. TRT's fine. Do man. a little something. No one's you know? gonna get mad at you. Yeah, deepen that voice a little bit, dude. I went to what the what's going to go with it? Like what the fuck? Fun? He's the best. <laughs> I know. You know, I wanted to fight, but you know, sometimes things happen. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I think it's another higher. good one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> another good impression. <laughs> Get him. This guy's good, uh, man. This guy's really good. Uh, but yeah, I, another fighter that I think of that also should have retired way early is like BJ Penn. 
Yeah. It's like a really bad downhill slide. Because you also didn't, we didn't need to see him fight Yair Rodriguez. Like, yeah. Why? I didn't want to see that fight. But the, that, once again, the warrior spirit, what gets you, what makes you a really good fighter is also what you have to, like, be disciplined about and mm-hmm. understand, like, when to pull out. And, like, for Habib, he was like, dude, there's nothing left for me. I beat this guy, I beat this guy. And obviously, you could say, like, oh, there was way more challenges for him. But mm-hmm. I think when you're done, you're done. I, I just think mentally and I think the people that really know how to pull themselves out I feel like are GSP yeah the smart guys the I think really even smart Daniel people Daniel still was up there in age but I think he pulled out yeah. at the right time well his back was fucked up he, he couldn't did, do it in the yeah. last three fights he that, that surgery on his back changed everything so he said he would sneeze and blow his like yeah. <laughs> destroy his back <laughs> exactly <laughs> so for <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Cormier Cormier should have retired after that Derek Lewis fight because yeah. he, was, he was already his Champion. back was wrecked already yeah, was done so and after after that, pretty much done. You defended the heavyweight belt. You didn't need to do any more. And he was already forty. It's like, mm-hmm. what else do you need, buddy? And then the trilogy with Stipe was just, you know, that's just tough. Yeah, he's fighting all fucked up, got his eye ripped out. Yeah. And he said it too. He goes, "If I'm not going to get another title chance, which I'm pretty sure I won't, there's no point in me being mm-hmm. here." And I kind of like that about Daniel Cormier. A lot of people hated he's, Daniel. He's Cormier. honest with that. Yeah. He was. He's the best. I fucking Such a great him. competitor. Him arguing with John Jones till this day is the best rivalry ever. Hey, pussy, you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you. You think I'm just let you walk over here and kill me, John? You think I'm just going to do that? You let you kill me? Huh? <laughs> Bitch ass N word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, call me the N word real classy. Yeah, yeah. The widest thing John Jones could have ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, here's my favorite line. How do you know all these lines for a Because it was my Iconic, favorite. Dude. He was like, dude, my favorite thing was this. Like, look at you fucking looking like a crackhead. He goes, hey, hey, John, John, I may look like a crackhead, crackhead, but at dude. least I'm not a crackhead. That was so good. That and was then, at the press conference right yeah. live. Yeah. And then John Jones was just quiet. He goes, like, all right. You got me there. I love crack. <laughs> it's pretty good. Delicious. Don't knock until you try it. Gordon Ryan. Uh, wins at the UFC Invitational three with an arm bar, but whatever. Nah, it wasn't Invitational. It was a it was I, something else. Are you sure it wasn't UFC Invitational three? No, 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 it wasn't. It was um. It was a it was one slow FC, grappling one FC special. <laughs> no, 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 it was a uh, their version of like he's. I think he's the heavyweight champ uh-huh. for they call it who's number one. That's the that's the oh, okay, show yeah. that they do. But yeah, it's the who's number one. He competed against this guy named Patrick Gaudio, Claudio Claudio yeah. Gaudio. Oh, you're right. He's just going to run into an underhook again. The best part about this, though, like, of course, he's going to win. It's Gordon Ryan. But it's that he did a magician trick, and he put a prediction in a chest. I don't know if you saw this, of who, how he was going to yeah. win. And then he, does, he does this a lot, by the way. This guy's weird, man. That's like, like his it. signature thing. So this is what he does. He'll say, uh, this is how I'm going to beat the guy. He'll write it on a note. <laughs> With terrible handwriting, by the way. He, he writes like a five-year-old. A hundred percent. Which is fine, though. He fucking stuck a pen in his ass and started drawing, <laughs> writing with it. But he was he was scooting. Yeah, <laughs> the core workout. <laughs> you know he scoot. You know who's a big fan of Gordon Ryan? Donald Trump Jr. This dude is always in his comments like, "Great shit, Gordon Ryan." Like he's really? a big fan. Dude, why don't you just suck his dick already, dude? Who me? Well done. Or Donald? No, Trump. Donald Trump Jr. Donald yeah, Trump you, Nick. That's exactly what I meant. Oh, arm bar. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I don't think I could stop him. <laughs> Arm bar. Uh, That's but then the proper I, way to perform. Why did he also promote proper twelve? Was he sponsored by them? Maybe it was like a, a tongue in cheek thing. He was trying to do a pun or something. Maybe or maybe he is sponsored by them. Who knows? He, but what he proper. does, he'll 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 base his win. <laughs> he'll base his like how the the way he's going to win based on his DVD that he's promoting. Smart. <laughs> and so they sell like fucking hot bro, cakes, that's bro. So good. They're really good DVDs, but they're they're eighteen hours long. But it's it's every little thing that he does, his whole system, for every position, top and bottom, defense, offense, and he'll just showcase well, it in the match. So I was and gonna then ask, promote it. So that becomes like now the promo. That's the promo. That. That's his Joe Rogan experience. He goes on, plugs it in real time, and then his DVDs to the moon. That shit's so fucking like jujitsu is so frustrating to me because I would hear stuff. Well, you know, we rolled for a little bit here and mm-hmm. there, and this fool just saying shit to me as if I know what the fuck is going on. Make sure you plant your hound. You fucking hip thrust. You got to go into the dragon roll, flip over yeah. into the insiguri, <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit of a insurrection. Yeah, with the M and R. It's like what's with all these fucking words, bro? Dude, the first five cues, I was like, those are very clear. I think that's under. And then he said, and he said dragon roll. <laughs> He said dragon roll. I don't know what the 
the fuck yellow is tail. Yeah. Make sure you post up and you base up, and after that, you base god. Base <laughs> 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 god. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on, man. Like the terminology is so confusing to me. He's at your hips. Make sure you fucking post. What the fuck? He's at my hips. What does that mean? What yeah. the fuck does that? Yeah, mean? Nick, explain yourself. He's, what does that mean? He's posting your hips or something. I don't know. What's, I don't remember yeah, what happened. What does that mean? He's near your hips. It's just so confused. It's literally another language. But it's like it's the same way. Like you look at striking, and so much of it is positional, and you just have to. But that's you under. But it's like let's be honest. The words for striking coaching is way more intuitive than jujitsu. Because there's only like seven punches you could throw for jujitsu. It's like it's so many. There's so many different positions, and if you don't understand all those positions, you're fucking lost. Then you're doing inseguris and dragon rolls and yeah. I want to see Tostado. David's DVD from BJJ. <laughs> 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 Learn how to inseguri roll with inseguri. So. Hey, make sure you get the hamachi kama because if you're not, <laughs> then you're pretty much fucked right now, dude. dude. It's just a video of him with a pen in his butt draw <laughs> <laughs> predictions of how he's gonna win. What the fuck am I at a Japanese restaurant? What the hell is going on, dude? Ikura roll, ikura roll. Hey, you know what's funny? So you look at the Gordon Ryan dudes. Uh, Gordon Ryan and his coach is John Danaher. He's a very prolific jutsu guy. Yeah, he is. They are the guys who use the traditional Japanese words for the techniques. Oh, my God. So oh, they'll go be like Kazushi or fucking... Oh, uh, they're also like anime Sinkaku fans, huh? or whatever. Yeah. But they're using that <laughs> shit, and then when they started using that, I was like, what the fuck is Sinkaku, dude? Dude, it's a simple. <laughs> <laughs> John Danaher talks Don- like that. Yeah. I'm a John Danaher <laughs> from Boston. Uh. Yeah, Boston. Uh. Make sure you do a tonkatsu. <laughs> <laughs> Slice up. That's a crispy. And it end with the tamago. <laughs> all our Japanese words are all food based. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything else. Hey, you're asking us, we're, man. We're reading off a menu, dude. <laughs> Nishiki rice. <laughs> Nishiki rice. <laughs> Nishiki <laughs> Ramen <de> soda. <laughs> a little bit of yakult. <laughs> yakult? Yo, that's sick. You trained David in jiu-jitsu, but you only call it foods for the certain People won't know. Then he'll know, dude. Hey, all my Here's coaching cues, if I ever compete in jiu-jitsu, has to be food stuff, so nobody knows what's going Japanese on. Japanese foods. Only Japanese food. food. Wakame! 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 Wakame now! Wakame now! This fat guy's fucking hungry as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get him a sandwich already. All he's doing is calling out food oh, names. Shit. <laughs> um, Joe Rogan uh, recently uh, praised Alexander Volkanovsky as MMA's number one pound-for-pound fighter. And he said he won against Islam Makhachev. Uh, Makhachev. Makhachev. In what? In what's, well, is he only basing it off of that last round? I think so. I mean, how did you have it? You had Makhachev. I mean, I watched it like 5,000 times, of and course. I thought Makhachev took it. And at first, it was kind of I got so caught up in the hype of that last round, I had to rewatch it, right? Yeah. I was like, no, Makhachev won. But if you're doing it on one rules, then Volkanovsky took that shit. Easy. Yeah. That's, why that's, the, that's the debate. That's, but the debate is not. We're, we're not doing one FC rules. Yeah. So, and I think the thing about Makhachev, Makhachev, that's how <laughs> Uncle Chev fa- calls him. Makhachev. His past fights have been so dominant. We've never seen anyone hurt him. <laughs> yeah, or just have success on him, take him down, even really. Not just the one loss, but besides the yeah, the head kick. But besides that, it's like, it's it's really easy to be like, oh man, this guy, he's the fucking man. People also forget too. If you go watch back, watch that fight back. People thought that I think it was in the second round that Volkanovski like hit him and he knocked. No, he tripped and he fell backwards. Yeah. But everybody was like, "Oh my God, he knocked him down!" It yeah. wasn't a knockdown. The it Aussies was, were loud. Yeah, it's just because he tripped and he fell mm-hmm. backwards. And also, too, are you forgetting how many times Volkanovski got cracked in the fucking face? Too? Yeah. He was getting cracked throughout the whole fight. And it we was... never seen Volk get wobbled like that. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh shit, he's actually. Yeah, he got wobbled. Gosh. He got taken down. He had he got his back controlled. So minus that last round, which like I said, if this is one FC rules, then Volkanovski all day. Mm. But Islam won that, and you know, for Joe Rogan to say that it, clearly it was Islam is a little weird to me. Uh, maybe it's because he looks like Volkanovski. <laughs> a little, you know, bias there. You know, the uh, same height, <laughs> same height, height, same haircut, bald, uh, same nice short. But like skill wise, when you look at Volk, you're like, there's not many holes in this dude's game. Like he is the mo- he probably is the most well rounded fighter in that pound for pound list. Oh, a hundred percent. I would you know as that. far as like the way he's able to win, the guys he's been able to beat. But then there's this guy named John Jones who's up there who does throw a wrench in the whole like pound for yeah, pound. Yeah, what's your guys pound for pound? Let's say top three. John Jones has to be number one no matter mm-hmm. what. You yep. you can't deny this man. But like, Matt Hamill's now blind and deaf because yeah. of him. 
So how do you? It, wait, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. <No. laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, like, oh, elbows? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! You said he's deaf and blind now. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. They should honestly. They should turn that shit over. That's yeah. John Jones has never been defeated, and he has only fought top, top, top contenders. And like I said, he defeated a double champ. <laughs> twice. Yep. Yeah. So let's let's talk about that. He also beat Alexander Volkanovsky. I mean, not Alexander Volkanovsky. What's his name? Fucking. Gustafsson. Uh, Gustafsson? Augusta, yeah, Gustafsson. Like, he beat Gustafsson, which was a really close fight, by the way. The first fight, I, he was also on coke and wasn't taking it seriously to beat him. And second second fight, time, game over. Game over. Yeah. He did more coke and he took it less seriously. <laughs> less <laughs> and second beat time. Him. And then beat him. Hit another easier. pregnant woman. Yeah. Because everybody has, like, this conversation with Habib, right? They go, oh, how many top contenders did he fight before he retired? All that yeah. other stuff. You can say none of that to John Jones. Yeah. So, but also, though, it took a lot of fights for Khabib to get to the title, okay? <laughs> true. I would, say, true. Would you, I would say <laughs> I would, defensive. I, would, I get defensive with right. Habib. I will say this. <laughs> John Jones, I think, has a better resume than Habib. Yeah. Like, bro, he, he went through, like, I think three generations of UFC stars. I've had this argument with Nick before where I feel like Habib – his resume is not as impressive as a lot of other champions. That's either. so rude, dude. Like, I, you're comparing him to GSP. If you look at GSP's record and who the fighters were at every time he fought, pretty wild. I think what I'll it say is, this Habib had no doubts, brother. No doubts he won those fights. You know what I mean? The biggest <laughs> argument for Habib is the way and in the fashion that he won. He just beat the shit out of everybody there was no question of like eh, maybe there are no questions it's mm -hmm. just he be and there are a few fights that people mentioned i can't remember right now they go oh he likely lost i said no i watched those fights you guys are fucking tripping. Nah, he won those fights. no he won those fights you're mm -hmm. fucking tripping i think the biggest thing for habib is like how he won in the fashion they won and how dominant he yeah, was because yeah. mm -hmm. if you go to john jones's records right the the, the gustafson one mm -hmm. people were arguing that if you yeah. go to him versus the young cat sure, that's sure. what's his face uh dominic reyes he said that he probably uh, lost that. I lost yeah. that one, Right. Yeah. He also has his steroid accusations. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of stuff that kind of taints his stuff. Even with Anderson Silva, he had steroid issues too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what taints his record and how he left. The thing about Habib is that who was ever close to beating this motherfucker? Probably nobody, right? And so, like, it depends on what you consider. Dylan Dennis. <laughs> oh, Dylan Dennis. Dylan Dennis. Dylan Dennis won that fight, of course. He almost beat him after the Connor fight. Does Dylan Dennis still fight? I mean, I know he's doing the boxing match, but he hasn't fought since his last fight no, in Bellator, dude. right? No, One Bellator fight, so. and that was it, or two, or whatever it was. I he's really think. good at making himself relevant for doing nothing. Yeah, and I think he it's might be gift. walking away from the boxing fight, right? Isn't he threatening that? Which I is hilarious. No Why? Because of the lawsuit? Lawsuit, yeah. Honestly, I won't believe it until I see him fight. I won't believe it. Dylan Dennis, when he talks, it just I don't know what he's saying. It's so incoherent. <laughs> he just mumbles shit. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, Ariel, if you, um, yeah, I mean, you, you call me a bitch. And <laughs> he just always does that. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you saying, dude? You think he's, yeah. a, you think he's a little insecure, dude? A little bit. A little bit. Huh? He looks like a fucking Super Mario Goomba. I think he gets a lot of hate <laughs> on the internet. I think that'll make you. Look up a Goomba right now and tell me that doesn't look like fucking Dylan Dennis. <laughs> he does look like one. I will say, though, he is getting under Logan's skin. I think Logan's taking this shit. People are kind of turning on Logan, Logan. and being like, dude, Dylan's, fuck you, Dylan's the man. <laughs> <laughs> he looks that, like, that doesn't look like Dylan Dennis. You uh, tat him up, bro? Do the aerial, uh, him talking to Ariel again? Okay. Well, you know, you call me a bitch, and, um, you know, I, I'm up here, you know, I'm calling you out. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. Like, you know, you're a bitch, so. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the two teeth coming up from the bottom? Yeah, I see yep. it. He looks like a that. fucking Goomba, dude. He, Dylan Dennis has an underbite like me, so I know. We all, we know each other. Fucking pit bull looking motherfucker. He's <laughs> weird looking, dude. That might be the only time I've heard anyone call Dylan Dennis a Goomba. Or anyone, for that fact, <laughs> hey, being I, called a Goomba. What do you think happens if Dylan Dennis doesn't fight and he has to fight Mike Perry? If I was Logan Paul, I'd be like, hey, dude, we're taking the lawsuit off. No big deal. Hey, you just make it to the fight. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to fight Mike Perry, bro. No, you don't Paul want Mike Perry. You, nobody wants Mike Perry. Nobody wants Mike Perry. That guy is a fucking animal, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Dylan Dennis, I'm like I said, I'm pretty sure he knows he's going to lose and he just wants that paycheck and that's good for him. For somebody to say this relevant for not fighting in, in meaning that he's not doing anything that he's meant to do yeah. is pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. Like he's definitely figured it out how to stay relevant and he doesn't give a fuck. He just wants a paycheck. When he was posting all the pictures of his his uh Logan Paul's fiance with like all these different dudes. <laughs> And so, I bet some of them are just like at like a red carpet, like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, of course, yeah. pictures. But in that context of like, these are all the dudes you've been with. It's kind of really funny. Hey, oh, it's hilarious. It's really funny. Well, well, I'm curious too. What is the defamation lawsuit? Right? What is it 
based on because if he's only doing that which is just true like it's photos or whatever of people that she's been with what's what's the defamation part there are the parts where he is photoshopping people ah with her likeness or image so so <laughs> wait so he can't do that is he being sued for know. being funny <laughs> that's my comedic genius that's, being that's what i'm hilarious. saying it's Ugh. pretty good and he's staying within the bound he's not doing anything creepy like sending shit to her because she's hitting him with like also the harassment Love. But but also too, I think the argument is is like he's promoting a fight. Yeah, yeah. Like people want to see more. People because he's doing that, people care and they want to see the fight. I want to see the fight because of this. Do you guys think Logan Paul is on the juice, on the sauce, on the prime? <laughs> he's definitely. No, I don't think he is. If you look at his old TikToks where he does splits, I think he's just one of those white dudes from the Midwest that are just jacked. I, like, I look at it, and I don't know. Because, once again, I don't know what it takes to be that, so I have no opinion on it. That's why, like, it's hard for me to say who's on steroids or not unless it's so blatant. Yeah. Right? Because unless I, in my life, have dedicated myself to that level of fitness, then I have nothing. I have no barometer to kind of kind of guess or second-guess somebody else's hard work. I think it's, like, 70-30 he is. Okay. What does that mean? It's, like, a beef? What is this? Yeah, yeah. 30% chance... He's a uh, um, natural. Seven percent <laughs> chance. On he's, on, he's on something, bro. Something. Something. Who knows what it is? Yeah. Dude. But then again, too, like like you said, he's a he's a he's a wrestler. He's from Ohio. He's a white he's a, boy. He's a big boy too. You know. So here's some guys that, his, uh, that we think are in steroids. Like, yeah, for sure. Top five steroids. I mean, look at look at the the, the left le, the left photo. Bro, of right. Ubering. This this is what you were talking about. Yeah. That, when I see it, I'm like, yeah, it's steroids. Doc, if a fighter has crazy biceps like that, and it's not really, like, that genetic, you go, okay, bro, you're you're on something. All right, guys, uh, let's do our uh, quick predictions. We got UFC Fight Night. Dawson versus Green. I'm always going for uh, Green. Uh, who do you guys like? What do you? How do you feel about this? I like Bobby Green because of his uh, his ghetto ass fucking uh, Instagram <laughs> stories and shit. <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen them. What are they like? He just <laughs> he's just always on the thing, like, saying some rant. Hey, man, if... if, if if they don't love you, that means they don't fucking love you. It's like, all right, Bobby, back. We understand. Like, you're, not, you're, not, you're not saying anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm a king. You know what I mean? These peasants don't even know what. It's like, dog, Bobby, what do you say? This is pure nonsense. And then randomly out of nowhere, hey, when you do your bets, do it with me. <laughs> it's like he promotes his betting. I don't know. That's Bobby right. Green. He's like, great. He's. I love stylistically. He's amazing, right? Nobody fights like him. Hands down, it's really hard to take him down to. Slick ass fucking head movements. Yep. Quick ass fucking hands, dude. Yeah, I got Bobby Green. I didn't know he was such a big underdog on this. Plus three hundred. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's I mean, Grant a big Dawson's deal. Dope. Grant. I think Grant Dawson has the style to to deal with Bobby Green. He's gonna take him down, be a very dominant wrestling pressure. But I feel like. Bobby Green has the game to be able to break and jab him up. Oh, yo, he fought Ismagula? Yeah, and he beat him. Yeah, Bobby Green's going to lose. Uh, <laughs> bro, Ismagula. I just remember that. Scary. He, he beat the shit out of Ismagula. <laughs> and Ismagula's hella good. He's Dagestani, you know? Yep. Bobby Green might lose this one. After uh, I just remember what Grant Dawson did to Ismagula. Bro, stick to your, gun. your four, guns, man. Minus 400. That's a big. That's a big uh, favorite. You know what? I'll bet on this one. I'm a. I'm a. Let's go, Bobby, bet, bro. Bobby no, let's Green. bet some let's money on Bobby. Let's money. use his app. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's use his. Let's use his promo, promo code. Bobby Green's app. Let's put a hundred bucks on. Grant Bobby Dawson's Green. a big lightweight. Yes, he, he is. He seems like a big lightweight, bro. Fuck it. Yeah, you said a hundred. I'll put a hundred on it. Let's put a hundred on Bobby Green, man. Bobby, please. To win three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Give me three hundred bucks, baby. Let's go. Alasan. That's a good name. Joe Pfeiffer is like he's on a tear, bro. Yeah, but what about that guy's name though? I mean, Abdul, name. dude, Abdul hits like a fucking tank, dude. He's on a skid, isn't he? Can you check his record? I don't think. Is he? I think he lost his last fight, but his thighs are gigantic. Yeah. Dude, we basically... judge by thighs, yo. Yeah, I don't do anything based on skills or footage. Just thigh muscles. You know? Honestly, that is a good barometer. I'm probably going to go with Joe Pfeiffer. Not even probably for sure. <laughs> no, I'm going to go dog. Let's go dog. Joe. We're going Pfeiffer, bro. Let's go Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's. Um, uh, Alex Morono versus Joaquin. Dude, I'm going Morono. Rap songs, Buckley. I'm going Morono. Wait, Buckley went back to welterweight. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Make your choice. He was saying that 185 is where he's gonna stay at. Him and fucking Kevin Holland just keep going back and forth. Huh? They just want to train with. They just want to hang out, dude. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna shit. go Alex Morono. Uh, Drew Dober, Ricky Glenn. Ricky Glenn got that hair cut, huh? <laughs> On the UFC Reddit thread, which <laughs> is fucking hilarious, by the way. Um, every time Drew Dober fights, they go Drew Dober fight week, and they show the picture of the bad guy from the mask. What he puts the mask on? Do you remember him with the? Sleeve? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and he looks just like fucking Drew Dober, bro. That jawline is iconic. <laughs> Drew Dober looks like he doesn't curse. He's never spanked. <laughs> He's his a sweet, kid. sweet boy. Dude, He's an elder. His lawn is perfect. Elder Dober, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? Is that not Korean what? zombie mixed with Nick? That's What's one his name, name, dude. Uh, dude, you can't just pull, pull, pull up any random Asian guy and say I look like him. That's not fair. <laughs> he looks like depressed Korean zombie. <laughs> dude, hey, Korean zombie, betterhelp.com slash uh, the casuals. <laughs> I, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> the pants are so tight. I know. So we cut it really hard. <laughs> Make, I changed my name now. So Arkule. <laughs> it's not even a real name. I just fell asleep on a keyboard because I'm so hungry. Pronounce that name. Huh? It's a Arakulang. He goes, uh huh? Huh? Uh huh? My name will look like a typo. <laughs> he just ran across the keyboard. <laughs> Somebody please a spell check of my last name. <laughs> Look so sleepy. <laughs> Nick, uh, do you have anything you want to share with our audience, the casuals out there? Do I have anything I want to share? Yeah. Um, let's just try to get David this boxing fight. Let's I, just keep I'm pushing the narrative. Because I feel like I'm so hyped for that, dude. Listen, I know you need the money. I'll work on it. Like I love how I'm just your. You're not gonna get the amount of money that we that I need for this. Would you be okay with that if I got you a sponsor that gave you free stuff for a year? <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. I, but, like, really good stuff. Dude, I, hey, really good stuff. I know the guy from Secret I Society. <laughs> I don't mind working with brands on, like, podcasts and stuff, but, like, if whenever it's, like, Instagram stuff, I'm like, ugh, yeah. Yeah, like, what Japanese, like, Well, because every time shows. a brand comes up, they're like, hey, make sure you stay this line. It's like, you know, I would never, ever say this in real life. Wow, drinking this water made my body feel amazing. Yeah. It's like, I would never say this. Like, come on, dude. And then all your fans go, skip. Yep, yeah. skip. I'm like, let me just say what I want to say. It's like, I bathe with this, and I start with my balls first. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, by the way, I'm not even joking. Like, I, it was literally for this. Yeah, start with the hot spots. It was literally for this water brand. <laughs> yeah. And they just, these, the script was so ridiculous. I'm like, it's going to get terrible traction. But they know you're a comedian, right? Yeah. It's like, you understand. It's like, no, no, no. What we want you to do is say this. It's like, yeah, but I also want good engagement, and this is not going to be it. Mm. And I refuse to, to be a shill. I can't do it. But on the podcast... I'll say whatever. Sponsor us. Liquid Death, please sponsor us. <laughs> sponsor I, us. We love your product. Well, it's really great. We'll bathe in it and wash our balls. The reason why Liquid Death is amazing is because they actually decided to put their water in aluminum cans because for recycling, it's actually a lot better than plastic bottles. Plastic bottles don't actually get recycled like you guys think they do. They just go in the ocean. Exactly. So Liquid Death, please sponsor us. Now do it as a Thai Korean or cooling. Okay. You know, sometimes I'm like a tire. <laughs> It's just because uh, I'm a dehydrate. <laughs> dehydrate. <laughs> well, you know, when uh, sometimes I pie, it, I I get a so sleepy. I don't even know. Is uh, am I a UFC? Am I a UFC? <laughs> UFC. Am, am I the UFC? <laughs> am I a U the UFC? Guess what? I'm a liquid. Liquid. <laughs> 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 uh, other than that, do you have anything you want to share with the casuals out there? Uh, casual fans. Uh, I know this has nothing to do with this podcast, but if you can, I want you guys to go on YouTube and look up this commercial for this thing called Lemon. And it's this Asian guy back in like the 80s doing a commercial for this thing that's lemon flavored. And it's so racist and hilarious. It made me cry laughing. He goes, These are my favorite flavor is a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lemon. And the guy's like, it's lemon. That's what I said. It's a lemon. <laughs> is this a, an American commercial? It's an American commercial, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, I miss old America. That's what I said. Lemon. Lemon. You mean lemon? That's what I said. It's a number one lemon. <laughs> guys, look up that. That's the question for today. Is that racist? <laughs> look, go watch that video. Look up YouTube Asia. Do you know what it's for? Just look up Remon. <laughs> R-E-M-O-N. Remon commercial. Remon Fridge. Put Asian lemon commercial. <laughs> look it up and fucking laugh your ass off. And let us know what you think about that in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe subscribe to us. Follow us on Spotify. Leave a five-star review on Apple. We're going to have some other guests and people coming through here. We're going to have a, we're, a fight's coming up. So we're going to talk about that next week. We love you guys so much. Peace. Peace.